this is the all new Range Rover Evoque. And while it not may look as such, it's actually a significantly improved car compared to its previous generation model. As a reminder, the Range Rover Evoque competes with the likes of the BMW X1, Mercedes-Benz GLA, Audi Q3, and Lexus UX. Though weirdly enough, the base price of a Range Rover Evoque is nearly twice as much as some of its competitors. Which then begs the question of whether the Range Rover Evoque is indeed two times better compared to its competitors. Let's start then with the way it drives. Two turbo diesel engines are available across two variants, with the range kicking off with this SD165 that we're driving today. And then there's also a more powerful and more luxurious D200R Dynamic, which understandably costs a little bit more. But regardless of whichever variant you're choosing, all are mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission. And since after all this is a Land Rover vehicle, all-wheel drive comes as standard along with Land Rover's terrain management system. I'm actually impressed with the car's handling. Um, okay, so it doesn't feel as sporty as the BMW X1, but it's actually close. Um, the steering actually has a degree of responsiveness as you go through this set of twisties and it's really a nice diesel engine. It responds to your throttle inputs really well. Kicks down to the gear that you want as well in a responsive manner. Um, very impressive powertrain, well calibrated for this type of vehicle. Um, even though you're going through inclines or whatever, um, the engine stays silent. No? So it's still refined. Um, road noise is really well kept to a minimum. Sobrang kapal, I think, ng sound insulation talaga in terms of sa kanyang tires. No? So really good in that aspect. The brakes are also commendable. I like how sharp the brakes are. I did not expect the Range Rover to this Evoque to be on the sporty side. No, I'm again not as sporty as the X1, but really close, really, really close. Um, I like how darty it feels. I like how there's a degree of agility to its handling. Body roll is also well controlled. Again, a, a bit of a dividend of its sort of firm suspension. Again, comfortable naman suspension, but there's a degree of firmness. Pero hindi siya yung firm na parang it will upset your ride na parang you would deem it as uncomfortable. Hindi, it's more of firmness in a way na it's there to provide you with good handling. And wow, this Range Rover Evoque delivers on that aspect. I think the contributing factor to this then is the all-wheel drive system because um, <laughs> narating yung mga gamit ko sa likod, diba? It's really clawing onto the road really well. I think contributing factor na rin yung kanyang all-wheel drive system being a Range Rover, of course. I swear, I'm actually surprised na may degree of fun itong Range Rover Evoque. Not kidding on that part. And again, the engine, the transmission, and how everything like that really... It's really well calibrated. It's really good. Really well done on JLR's or Jaguar Land Rover's part. It's really well done. So now that we're here in the open road with the Range Rover Evoque, and wow, um, I'm surprised by how well or how refined this thing is. Um... Coming from the E-Pace, it was the last Jaguar Land Rover vehicle I drove, which was so almost more than four years ago. And wow, what a quantum leap actually in terms of refinement. No, so we're actually doing triple digit speeds ngayon and Sheesh! It's so quiet. Um dahil ang sobrang minute ng road noise niya, ang sobrang onti ng road noise niya. Wala siyang tire roar, you don't hear the asphalt. There's more wind noise ngayon. Mas pansin mo siya. It's not that matapa ang wind noise. It's more of dahil kasi ang sobrang kapal ng insulation niya, I think, sa tire noise, sa mga ganon, sa wheel wells, no? Mas pansin mo ngayon ang road noise. But again, a very serene car. Super quiet, super refined. This competes at the same level as the BMW X1. But you'd be surprised na in terms of base price, yung X1 is um, half the price of a base or the most affordable Range Rover Evoque, no? And... It's, re it's really money well spent on that regard. Um, even overseas talaga, the Range Rover costs more than your equivalent BMW, no? But you do get a car that's, I guess, more special in terms of aesthetics, in terms of equipment at the get-go. Kasi, syempre, with the BMW X1, the base model, like you get few, much fewer equipment compared to this base model, again, the Range Rover Evoque. And wow, um, yeah. 
also in terms of the driving experience so sa refinement aspect lalo na um this is significantly more refined than than the BMW X1 well after all naman kasi X1 is now an outgoing model and all new ones coming in like a few months time but yeah um that's riding kasi on the previous platform pa ng BMW not the newer ones not the Clara lalo kasi that's for rear wheel drive BMW so, or not even yung front wheel drive na architecture ng 1 series which has been updated nung nagkaroon ng all new na 1 series nga diba? but anyhow I digress um yun nga it's really a serene refined car rides really good there's a bit of firmness but it's more of firmness na dahil kasi ang maging I think ang kanyang upside to that is maganda ang handling niya but yeah um, the ride's good I like a, a bit of firmness naman sa mga sikat ko I don't like the, the ride to be floaty So this car delivers on that aspect Stable, really good, very stable And this diesel engine This diesel and 9-speed automatic I don't remember Jaguar Land Rovers to be Really good in terms of the powertrain They tend to have a bit of parang quirkiness With their powertrain But here, with this new range of diesel engines And mild hybrids so, Or in the case of what we're driving in We're driving the D165 diesel the diesel engine is really strong. The torque delivery is really linear, really punchy. Um, there's my new turbo lalo. That's what I'm, that's what I'm surprised. Ang liit lang ng turbo lang niya, ang konti lang. Hindi siya yung kasing tapang as what I've experienced before sa mga dating Jaguar Land Rover products. This, the turbo lag in this thing is so minute. Ang konti niya lang. Really good. Really well tuned on that part for Jaguar Land Rover with this engine. I like the engine. I like the 9-speed automatic of this thing. Then, ang super responsive um, delivers the correct gear really well. It's really a well tuned and well calibrated powertrain, no. And with this car steering, no, which caters more towards stability out on a long straight, no. So you're not gonna do a lot of steering corrections with this thing. It's really a relaxing car to drive out on a long drive, and then appreciate maling sound ng itong ng kanyang super super gandang super high quality Meridian sound system. It's really good. Um. This is really 5.2 or 5.3 million pesos well spent. Yes, you're spending more compared to a BMW X1, but I really think it's money well spent. After all, this is a the luxury segment naman, so there's more emotional aspects at play compared to, like, let's say, if you're in the market of a CR for a CRV or a Mazda CX-5, if you're in this segment naman, more emotions are at play compared to what's on the mind. And wow, this Range Rover Evoque delivers. And... This is also gonna be a good time to talk about its fuel economy. It's really good. Um, I've been averaging ngayon at 7.2 liters per 100 kilometers for an entire week's use. And um, that basically roughly converts to around 12 to 13 kilometers per liter, which is really good for a diesel-powered all-wheel drive, by the way. All-wheel drive crossover SUV. You have to remember this is a Jaguar Land Rover product, or I mean this is a Land Rover product, no? So... It's gonna be blasphemous, syempre, kung wala tong all-wheel drive and wala tong degree of off-road capability. And yeah, um, really excellent. This car is really good. Sobrang ina-enjoy ko tong Range Rover Evoque. But of course, if you're spending this much on a subcompact luxury SUV, then you probably want to make a statement. Specifically, a statement that's worth 5.3 million bucks. And so, did Land Rover's designers do a good job? Sure, styling is always a subjective matter. But in my case, I really do like the Range Rover Evoque's looks. And though it's only an evolutionary design upgrade, why would you wanna mess with success? Because after all, the Range Rover Evoque's design has always been award-winning. But for this new generation model, Land Rover added a few new design touches, such as those pop-out door handles. Though of course, being a motorized part, we're actually kind of worried about its longevity. And this then leads me to the Range Rover Evoque's interior, wherein its transition as an all-new model is actually much more pronounced. Range Rovers have always felt a bit more special to me compared to yung mga German uh, user competition mo like yun, yeah, the BMW X1, the Audi Q3, or the Mercedes-Benz GLA. I really find their interiors to be more special and um, this layout has been iconic for the Range Rover lineup. No? So, um... This is a design that you're now familiar with and even then, till today, no, the interior really feels special. I like the tilting screen no, with this kanyang PV Pro infotainment system which we're gonna get into a little bit later. no. But quality-wise, I like the 
it's really soft, no? Like, there's no hard plastics here in the interior. I like the leather dashboard. The seats are also nice. Supple, it's nice. I like the white color, by the way. Um, Really nice. Really feels solid, by the way. The computer is built like a tank. Like, it's trying to match the Germans, no? Because usually, with the British brands, for me, um... Yung interior doesn't feel as solid as yung mga German brands, but this one is really up there in terms of solidity. Again, aesthetics, it feels really special inside here. Um, the minimalist layout looks really beautiful, really stylish. The materials are gorgeous. Now we're gonna go to the infotainment system, which works really well in this PV Pro infotainment. Yeah, you have this dual screen layout. Um, again, I'm not a fan of um, manufacturers ditching hard buttons para sa nang mga aircon and all that stuff but here in the PV Pro infotainment system no um and the kanyang dual screen layout you have these knobs sa baba niya to control the climate and also those are multifunction knobs so when you press the knobs they also do other stuff no so kung let's say you want to change the fan speed you also use the knobs dito sa baba it's really nice it's really in, in ano it's really intelligent no so I'm not complaining about the lack of hard buttons because in this case I like the integration of the hard knobs with the screen no um and now we're going to go towards the infotainment itself um the PV Pro infotainment looks gorgeous I like the interface it looks really nice there's a lot of stuff you can do so being a Land Rover of course being a Range Rover you can access your off-roading information here you can have your tilt information sa kanyang naka side or kapag na nasa ano niya basically we have enough gadgetry here to um, aid you in off-roading. But apart from that, in terms of your multimedia selection, it's really good, no? So you have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, and it looks beautiful in this really high-resolution screen. Really gorgeous interface. I still prefer BMW's iDrive knob-based infotainment. I still prefer using knobs. But as far as touch-based infotainment systems go, the PV Pro is one of my favorites, no? In terms of... Kung if you're gonna go towards a touch-based infotainment system. Maybe not as slick or as snappy as yung MMI ng Audi, no? But um, it's still good. It's a gorgeous interface. It really looks nice. Well presented as well. Siguro what I like about the Audi MMI system is that meron siya kasing haptic feedback. So, you still feel like you're touching hard buttons kahit screen lang siya. But yeah, um, apart from that, gorgeous interior. The infotainment system is well done. You have part digital gauges, which works in, the, in conjunction with the infotainment. But yeah, um, I like the interior as a whole. It's really a special place to be in. And now that leads me onto the car's back seats. So now that we're here in the back seat of the Range Rover Evoque, and um, for a subcompact luxury SUV, you actually have a good amount of legroom here. Legroom is actually pretty generous and though I mean the Omaha de Quattro, um, but that's pretty much a standard in all subcompact luxury SUVs no. Headroom is really good by the way. Um headroom is excellent um for my 5 foot 11 height. You have armrests here. They're pretty high in window line, so kids might find this to be a bit too high, so baka mahirapan sila with looking out the rear window. But rear window test. Not all the way down, pero pwede na. And you also have a Meridian sound system, which sounds really good. Um, other amenities here at the back, um, you have rear aircon vents. You also have a 12 volt outlet here. Not a USB port, but at least it's doable na. Um, yeah, it's a nice place to be in here at the back seat of the Range Rover Evoque. And then as for trunk space, the Range Rover Evoque offers 591 liters of space. Though in Land Rover's tradition, they measure the load area from floor to ceiling. And then with the second row seats folded down, this increases to nearly 1400 liters. And these figures are actually pretty good for the class. And of course, being a luxury car, this comes with a powered tailgate. The Range Rover Evoque starts at a little under 5.3 million pesos. And this gets the SD165 that we're driving today. And apart from the already aforementioned features, you also get lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, digital rear view mirror, and automatic emergency braking. 
And then if you step up to the D200R Dynamic, you now get a sportier exterior design along with a panoramic sunroof, fully digital gauges, blind spot warning with rear cross traffic alert, 360 degree camera system, and Land Rover's clever clear side ground view monitor, which is basically a camera system that lets you see what's under the front axle. Now, is the Range Rover Evoque worthy of its higher price tag compared to its other subcompact luxury SUV competitors? Well, that depends on your priorities. Because after all, Land Rover's Range Rover sub-brand offers something that's much more luxurious and much more premium compared to its usual competitors. And compared to your usual BMW X1 or Lexus UX, the Evoque is indeed a much more special SUV. And if such a privilege is almost worth twice as much as a BMW X1, then by all means go ahead and buy yourself a Range Rover Evoque.